and gentlemen, welcome back to Forward Assist, where we're going to take a deep dive into the stock market today and look at some futures. Um, before we get into today's video, I'd like to remind you guys of a few things. First of all, if you're looking to support the channel, there are a couple ways to do so right now. You can check out the links in the description. You can go to Primary Arms, where you can get awesome optics. They also have a pretty sweet military and law enforcement program there, primary arms government. You can also go check out Right to Bear Concealed Carry Insurance for all those unwanted social encounters that you're probably having. Now, today we're going to talk about stocks in general as well as review this new Magpul DT stock. So, if you're like me, you may have started out with one of those very, uh, let's say, old school M4 waffle stocks. Now, those things were pretty notorious for being super rattly. They're just plastic. Um, there's no polymer butt pad, so they could be a little bit uncomfortable at times. They didn't have a great range of adjustment, and they just are all around, I would say, not great unless you're looking to do some kind of a a retro clone bill. Um, Magpul, of course, is probably one of the most well-known, if not the most well-known stock makers on the planet right now. So we're going to review their Magpul DT stock today. And as we do that, we're just going to also talk about what you're going to look for in a stock, why you'd want to upgrade, and some of the features that this stock has, as well as a couple of other ones. So without further ado, Gentlemen, let's get to it. The Magpul DT stock came out in the last couple of months and is, as you can see, basically just an upgraded Magpul CTR. Now, I'll show up a picture here of a Magpul CTR stock. They obviously share a lot of similarities, but a couple of key differences. Now, one of the main similarities they share is the little... Uh, inserts right here where you can then use a cheek riser. I don't have one right now, but any cheek riser that's compatible with the Magpul CTR stock is also going to be compatible with the Magpul DT, so that is a nice touch. Of course, like all Magpul stocks, it's got a quick adjust lever right here. Very handy and simple to use. This one has a nice sloping angle to the butt pad, and that is nice if you're shouldering a gun while wearing body armor um, or some other kind of equipment, perhaps a chest rig. Anytime you're wearing something like that, the angle that the stock rides at will make it a little bit easier to shoulder that gun. So nice touch as well. Of course, it has a QD point right here, and then your standard, uh, what they call it, footman's loop, I think they say. So you could just direct thread, I guess we could call it, uh, a sling through there if you didn't want to use the sling QD point. Now, one of the major changes that you can probably see right here is the addition of this flat point on the bottom. Now, the Magpul CTR stock, of course, comes to a pretty much triangular point. And where this is pretty handy is for resting it on any kind of a shooting bag while you're zeroing, for instance, or in the case of some guys running this on a precision rig, um, using that rear bag for precision shooting is going to be a lot easier with this flat section. With the pointed section... The, the triangular point would kind of dig into the bag and then want to wobble off axis, but this flat spot gives it a nice little shelf to rest on. And I've noticed just in my own use of this stock, I've got a couple hundred rounds through it so far, um, I've it. noticed that it does make a difference when you are even just zeroing your rifle from the bench. Throwing on that stock, it's a lot more secure, or throwing on the bag, excuse me, it's a lot more secure. And it just feels nice and sturdy as you are 
holding the gun steady to to take your precise shot. So kudos to Magpul for that. If you have been at all in the precision world, you may have seen the Arisaka system. I'll throw up a picture of that here that does more or less what the Magpul DT stock has. It kind of flattens out the Magpul DT or the Magpul CTR stock. It adds some of those spacers to kind of flatten out the bottom right here. And so it looks like Magpul took some notes and decided to make this flat spot for the benefit of everybody. So at this point, I guess unless you're looking for a CTR again for some kind of a clone build, these are brand new essentially, so I don't think they'd probably qualify as clone correct for anything, at least for a little while. But I guess I can't really see much of a reason to get a CTR stock instead of this DT. Um, these little features are nice. It's got that flat spot. It's got the same attachment point, so you can run a riser on it for higher optics. The stock here seems to be a all-around upgrade, and I have really been liking it so far. Now, this is not what I would say is a dedicated precision stock. You can certainly make that work in that regard. I do have a Magpul PRS light stock, and I'll throw up a picture of that here, um, which I like, but the problem with the Magpul PRS light and the other PRS stocks is that it's not adjustable, and so the length of pull is very long. And there's times where you're trying to, perhaps if you're wearing a lot of layers, or just based on your body position, you may need to try and um, be a little bit closer to the scope to get your good sight picture. And I've found that the PRS light is a little bit inconvenient in that aspect. Well, I'll throw up a picture now of the new Magpul MOE PR stock that's coming out sometime this spring. And that is essentially a um, little bit different stock than this. You can see it's got that curvature, almost like a Daniel Defense stock and the flat spot. And so that seems like it'd be a pretty good option for a adjustable precision stock that's not going to weigh a ton and is not going to break the bank. Magpul stocks typically come in anywhere, at least the adjustable carbine ones, they typically come in anywhere between 40 and 60 or so dollars. So for this thing, I think on Brownells, I paid 48 bucks. This was not sent to me or anything like that. I did buy it with my own money. Um, got this from Brownells, and for $48, I'm very, very satisfied. I think it's a great stock, and I think anybody who picks one up will feel the same way. Now, we'll change tracks just a little bit, and we'll talk about what you should be looking for in a stock and what some of the options on the market are besides this one. So we'll move this out of the way. And we'll take a look at the classic Magpul SL stock. Now, this is the first stock I got after I ditched the old waffle stock. So I have put thousands and thousands of rounds through this guy. And... Uh, similar ones on different guns that I own or my work guns. So I can, I can very confidently say that the Magpul SL stock is good to go. I have no issues with it. Again, it has um, the quick adjust lever right here. You can see my Voltor A5 receiver extension here is pretty tight on this. There is absolutely no play whatsoever. The Magpul DT stock, if we bring it back in frame for a second, on my PSA Sabre lower has a tiny bit of play, not bad, but it does have a noticeable amount of play. I will say that getting this stock on to the receiver extension was the most ridiculous stock I've ever tried to install. The lever here, you simply take these little tabs or slide something into the little groove right here and pull this down to slide it onto the receiver extension. Well, 
it was extremely, extremely tight, and it took me probably 15 minutes before I had to use Allen wrenches on both sides of these of this little bar right here, wedge them under there, and use those along with a prying tool to pop this thing down far enough to get it onto the buffer tube. So extremely tight to get on. I've never had that issue with probably half a dozen other stocks I've installed. So take note of that. But now that it's on, I'm very pleased with it. But like I said, the Magpul SL, quick adjust lever, zero play, zero slop on this A5 buffer tube. It, of course, has the quick attach point. It's got the uh, footman's loop up top and on the bottom. You also could, of course, on this one, I believe on this section right here, you could run a um, M-lock QD point. This is not going to accept a QD point. It's just way too thick, but... The thin stock right here would certainly, I think, be able to accept potentially a QD if you wanted to run it that way. It probably wouldn't fit completely perpendicular, but if for some reason you wanted to run a QD point down there, I think you could probably make one work. Um, they both have a little bit of a cheek shelf. I would say the SL has a little bit more. You can see the angle right here and the angle right there. A little bit more of a cheek shelf on the SL, but not a lot. I have the SLS as well, which is very similar to the classic B5 SOP mod. I'll throw a picture of the SL right now. It's currently on my work rifle. I like that a lot. It's great for magnified optics as well, where you want to get a nice cheek weld. That extra shelf is a handy, handy um, point of contact. And with that extra ledge, it also allows for a battery storage compartment tube on each side of the stock. So the SL is kind of one of their mainstay basic stocks these days. Tons of rifles come with them. I have no issues with them. They're nothing incredibly fancy or super high-end, but they are completely functional, and I would have no problem running one of these as I have, like I said, for thousands and thousands of rounds. So the Magpul SL is also good to go. Finally, we'll take a look at Palmetto State Armory stock, which as you can see is kind of a cross, I would say, between the Magpul SL right here and the Magpul SLS. Again, I don't have my SLS handy, but you can see that the cheek weld, cheek rest area is in fact larger than on the SL. It's smaller than the SLS and there's no battery compartments right here. It's just a little bit more of a shelf, but not enough to fit batteries in. Um, this stock has a quick adjust as well right here. And it's got two QD points, four if you count them on both sides. And you can then run this stock in a number of different configurations along with a footman's loop here, here, and here. So this is the Palmetto State Armory CCS. Uh, came on my Sabre. I like it and I have had zero issues with it. It had a little bit of play side to side and um, a little bit more than the DT did but still not bad. It has a little bit of a flat spot on the bottom. You can see right here, not a ton, but more than the more than the SL, I would say. And again, similar to the Magpul CTR, this triangular point just kind of wobbles if you put it into a rear bag. So it's tough to get a really nice flat resting point. So. The PSA CCS has been a nice stock. I've got a couple hundred rounds through this as well. I simply removed it from my Sabre because I wanted to test out the new Magpul DT, and that's the gun I've been shooting the most recently. So I will definitely be hanging out of this, and I will 
be putting it on a future build for sure. But we do have the Magpul, or excuse me, we have the Palmetto State Armory CCS, another good option. So when you're looking for a stock, it's probably going to come down to what your needs are. If you're looking for something that's extremely lightweight, you can find some very minimalist stocks that are super lightweight and won't add a lot of weight to your gun. They are probably not going to be the most comfortable, especially if you're shooting with a cheek weld on a precision optic. Many of those lightweight stocks are just not designed for that, and they're more designed for like a three-gun type of setup where you're using a red dot or maybe an LPVO where it's not a precision event but more of a blasting affair, and the cheek weld isn't necessarily as important. The uh, sling points these days, QD sling points are pretty much a necessity. There are a couple of stocks, including some that Magpul makes on the cheaper end that don't come with them, but I would strongly recommend getting a stock with QD points just for the added uh, utility that it lends you. The cheek shelf obviously is going to be up to the user if you're using a magnified optic at a traditional height around that lower one third then a cheek shelf like this is very handy if you're going to be running a super high red dot in some of these new skyscraper mounts like a gbrs boy you can then get a riser magpul makes some as well as a bunch of other companies that will clip onto here so you can get a cheek weld with one of those skyscraper mounts so if you're using a super high red dot i would not recommend something with this kind of a cheek weld because you're not really going to get much use out of it and it's simply going to be butting into your chin so you can do it but you may find that something like this with a riser on it is going to be a little bit more comfortable so all in all gentlemen the stock is probably the easiest upgrade you can make to a rifle it's simply I would pull down on this little tab, like I said, pull the stock off, pop a new one on, and that's it. I consider this an upgrade and not an accessory because many rifles come with a basic stock that you may not want. Sometimes you do, like the Magpul SL. Again, I would have no issues running one of those. But if it comes with a waffle stock like the build kit that I built my first AR with did, then I would strongly recommend upgrading to something a little bit better. Anybody can take one of these off and put one on. It doesn't require any special tools. It's simply a very functional upgrade that you can do in a matter of seconds usually and can really, A, change the look of your rifle, which, of course, if you're looking to look cool, then Godspeed to you. But also, if you are looking to change the characteristics of your rifle, whether it's for precision, whether it's for um, lightweight and minimalist handling, or whether it's for kind of a mix of the above, you can do a lot of that simply by swapping out the stock. So I like this Magpul DT so far. I would definitely recommend it to anybody looking to pick one up. Again, I guess I can't see much of a reason to buy a CTR moving forward here unless you need one for a clone build I will definitely be picking up one of those Magpul uh, MOE PR stocks when they come out sometime this spring knowing Magpul it could be any time from March through mid-July but you never know I will definitely pick up one of those to run on a precision recce style rifle I think and I will review that when the time comes as well so Gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment, repent and be baptized. Don't forget to shoot, move, and communicate. And I'll see you next time.